look in my eyes. What do you see? It's a cup with personality. <laughs> it's too early. <laughs> It's a rib, isn't it? Putting, <laughs> putting the, like the most grumpy morning person with the most morning person in the office. I, th I think my I think my birth my birth was a rib on the planet. I think. <laughs> Here is your wrestling news. So Bray Wyatt apparently didn't do business in WWE and there was talk of big creative issues. We'll get to that in a moment. TNT are expecting a CM Punk AEW debut and we have an update on a SummerSlam 2021 title match. More on that soon. Bray Wyatt seems to be the, the biggest miss of all that's gone on this year and all the people that have been let go from the company. I think it goes without saying that Bray Wyatt and The Fiend, that's the biggest miss of all, isn't it? I, I was stunned by Braun. I was shocked by a lot of the other releases, but Bray just, that one hit differently. That mm. one was, I couldn't believe it. Interesting take on this from Freddie Prince Jr who was on the Ringer's New Wrestling <laughs> podcast. Uh, he talked about how much he loved the, uh, the character The Fiend and all that Bray Wyatt did. He said that they can't say exactly why Bray was released, but apparently there were very big creative issues between Bray and Vince McMahon slash Kevin Dunn. Uh, Freddie said that Bray didn't do business like they would have liked. Uh, Vince and Kevin Dunn doubled down on, them, on him as a result, also hinting that this was part of the reason that he lost to Goldberg in Saudi Arabia. Ooh. Don't do it our way. Fine, then you're just, losing to Bill. Just in case you're wondering why Hollywood Big Shot, Freddie Prince Jr. is weighing in on the wrestlings. Uh, he did appear and work with WWE in an on-screen capacity in like what, 2007, 2008 mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. And then he came back to the company worked as a director and producer. So he is kind of in and around that backstage scene and probably knows people that still work in the company. So this is... I mean, it's just... It's just disappointing, isn't it? It it kind of it's kind of what I expected. Like yeah. some, like WWE and Vince McMahon in particular has always been like, this is my vision. You will it's not his baby. go off the path yeah. of my vision. Yeah. And and Bray Wyatt seems like somebody who had his own vision. And WWE was sort of forced to to, to shoehorn his vision this in because it was too popular. This is it. And so the, the problem is it's how you approach and then run with something when it becomes unexpectedly popular against what you think is going to happen. So if something's building, then you need to capitalize on it. But if you're a company like WWE where there is less creative control at a talent level, it feels like we, we can't say that for certain. But, mm. you know, it, throughout the years, it just seems that people pitch ideas and have them shot down this oh that would have been awesome or you know things kind of start and then disappear real quick but Bray is an overly creative guy like yeah. I mean look at if you just look at the, his entire WWE run it's just reinvention and it just changes throughout everything he does even when he's looping back on like older takes on the character before he became the fiend it was always just slightly more skewed but yeah I mean obviously when you've got somebody like that going, I want to do this and I want to do this, and you're like, uh, yeah, oh, uh, mm, mm, uh, yeah, and that's what we want, pal. Yeah. Just be a wrestling dentist. That's all we want from your pal. He was never going to be a dentist. That would have been a fun time, though. Uh, over on AEW, we talk about guys that, that had their, uh, their, their headbutts with Vince McMahon. One of them is set to, to set the world on fire tomorrow night. <laughs> One way or the other, yeah. So if he shows up, the world's going to be set on fire. If he doesn't show up, the world is going to be set on fire. Uh, and now, and now the, the network are expecting it. So uh, this is uh, <laughs> this is either a case of they've got him nailed down, or this is Wayne stock, where, <laughs> yeah. where Wayne promised the world has gone. <laughs> oh dear! Uh, Fightful say TNT itself is operating on the assumption that he's coming in based on those we spoke to. Fightful spoke with multiple people involved with Warner Media and TNT. They're very excited about bringing in CM Punk. They noted he'll have their promotional machine behind him upon his return. It makes sense. You know, for a fact, the second that uh, the second that he debuts, the second that he arrives in that company, he's 
going to be on billboards in Times Square. He's going to be all over the news. He's going to be doing the rounds in like a Hollywood film style kind of breaking news way. I think it's something we might see spill over. You know, it's not going to be on GMB, but it'll certainly get reported on by a wider swathe of, of, of press than, you know, standard wrestling would. Well, it's when you see, when you see people talking about him who aren't wrestling fans. Yeah. That's, well, that's the indicator that something's about to become very zeitgeisty. There's that word again from earlier in the week. Uh, <laughs> Kushida on Twitter last night. Uh, now, he missed out on um, his NXT Cruiserweight title defense against Roderick Strong. He put on Twitter, I'm sorry for everyone who was looking forward to the title match. Did not clear the medical. I can't do anything and I'm just stunned. I promise to be back on TV soon. Thank you for your support. So Kushida was a similar message to the one that Ember Moon put out last week where she didn't pass medical. Yeah. And it's just like, I'm just almost like at odds and then to she, what to yeah, do. And then she pops up on Twitter with, just so you know, I'm not injured. And it was like, okay, uh, this is starting yeah. to get very... I mean, but at the same time, I guess, you know, we are involved in, in you know, we're part of the dance when it comes to wrestling being this scripted, mm. you know, how far do they... Well, you know, oh, they're injured this week, they're not quite going to be there. And it can be used to kind of alleviate booking and try new things. But, I mean, Kushida... <laughs> just you got Kushida. Just I, use him. I'm intrigued to see what the medical clearance process is. Yeah. I, I, again, how much of it is, as you say, story? How much? Of well, it is not story? I mean, if it, if it is a genuine medical, you mm. know, the, like he hasn't passed a medical. It's important not to yeah. wrestle if you haven't passed a medical because, it, regardless of whether you think you're fighting fit, you're not. So you've got to mm. rest up and you've got to get better. But. If, it, if, it, if it's like more of a kayfabe, you know, didn't pass the medical, then it's like, okay, well, what's happening? To quote Sam Driver, it's Kushida! <laughs> it's Kushida! <laughs> uh, Wrestle Grand Slam on the horizon. We've had a title <laughs> match announced for it, sir. This oh, is, it's Sam Driver. This is, oh, I, I couldn't believe So New Japan put out uh, a, a Twitter poll like stipulation. Uh, and now Chase Owens is going to f uh, defend the provisional 2021 King of Pro Wrestling title against Toru Yano in a no DQ I quit <laughs> match. And I couldn't imagine a better pairing here. Chase Owens very much being the kind of straight guy and Tori Yan who's going to be like the big comedy four guy here I think and he's going to be kind of bouncing off each other and I think this is going to be brilliant. I genuinely think this match is low-key going to be excellent because you know he's going to keep going for the corner posts. He's going to, It's just going to build and build and build and build and build. We'll have some fun with that. I think yeah. Night One's looking quite spicy. It is. So Night One so far is provisional King of Pro Wrestling 2021 no DQI quit match. Chase Owens versus Toriyano, as we said. Uh, Kazuchika Okada versus Jeff Cobb, which, hoo -hoo! Isn't Cobb been calling him a young boy? Uh, Kaz, uh, Kaz is going to get a tour of the islands. He's going to get a tour of the islands. And then we've got the IWGP United States title match pitting champion Hiroshi Tanahashi, new champion Hiroshi Tanahashi, against Kota Ibushi. And then on night two, we've got the IWGP junior heavyweight title match, which is Robbie Eagles defending his title against Takahashi. Uh, we've got IWGP. WGP tag team titles in action. Tai Chi and Zack Sabre Jr. defending their belts against Naito and Sanada. Uh, and then in that match as well, we've got Haruki Goto and Yoshihashi, so three-way. And then we've got the IWGP World Heavyweight title match pitting current champion Shingo Takagi versus Evil. But I think Will Ospreay is going to have something to say about that. He certainly is. Because, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, uh, he made his return and has uh, revealed that he's going to be part of eight, uh, New Japan's Autumn Attack. Uh, and he has set his sights on Tagaki and he's declared, declared himself the true IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. I love this sort of stuff. Mm. So, uh, you know, we're going to have champion versus champion for the undisputed IWGP Heavyweight Champion, probably. Uh, but Takagi and Osprey are going to make some some fair measure of magic together. It's going to be brutal, I imagine. Just, hor just, just stiff kicks and stiff flips and knees and, and landing really, like just hard and it's oh it's going to be brilliant we'll have an undisputed IWGP champion by the end of the year I reckon get that decided uh, no dispute now over one of the title matches for SummerSlam our final story of the day uh, there was some question marks over the Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair ha they weren't part of uh, the entire weekend of live events and there were some questions whether or not their match would go ahead PW Insider are reporting despite this uh, they are cleared to perform and barring something unforeseen will be a Friday night Smackdown tomorrow and at SummerSlam on Saturday. So that matches the thing. I think it could be 
uh, one of the, the stronger matches of the night if they let him go. Yeah, this is the thing. If you if you just let him get out there and and do what they want to do, it's going to be an exceptional match. Mm. And I think you know the, the, the talent on display by both of these competitors, you, you, it can't be bad. It just can't be bad, Tom. <laughs> They're going to have a lovely time with it. Look out for predictions for SummerSlam on the YouTube channel before Saturday, and check out nine pitches for SummerSlam on the YouTube channel all right now. And if you're feeling a little bit retro on the podcast feed, Justin Henry and I uh, do a watch along of SummerSlam 1995 from many years ago. Remember that? King yeah. Mabel and Diesel in the main event. You don't know how lucky you've got it. You don't know how good you've got it these days, <laughs> you kids. This is what we had in our day. Come watch it with us and like it. More news as we get it. Stay safe. Love you. Bye.